up, Miss Spark Wisdom? How you doing, baby? I'm sorry. How you doing, ma'am? It's very respectable that you put this video up. I'm very happy that you put that video because. Please don't call me, baby. Cause I'll call you. Okay, alright, I love that song. Alright, I love your views on the independent woman. And I've seen that, um, that documentary, that little show, the little piece, or whatever. But my opinion on it from a male perspective, I agree with you. You know what? I agree with you 100%. Um, a lot of guys probably like, man, you're just punking out. You, you, you just going from side to side, whatever. I don't think that women, I'm going to say the misconception of an independent woman. You know, they're going to saying that if a woman could go out, the true, I'm going to put it like this because I'm jumbling my words. A true independent woman does not say anything. A true independent woman is humble. She does behind the scenes type of work. She makes sure them children is fed, clean bathe all that make sure the house is intact make sure that um the relationship values is in order and what i mean by family intact is you know make sure they're respectful to their elders make sure they're going to school doing what they have to do making sure that they have manners overall um in the true independent women um you know they go to work they, they put up with the 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 quote unquote you know terrible jobs or the shi TTY type of jobs, they put up with the uh, the sexism, the racism, and all the isms in the workplace in the world, you know, because to bring to bring their children up in a good environment. You know, true independent women. I'm not gonna say they don't worry about their appearance, but they do the best for themselves in order to. How can I put it? They, they make sure they take care of themselves, but they make sure their number one priority is their their kids, the ones they brought to the world. Because as a kid, growing up, you're like, oh, when I have kids, I'm going to make sure they have the best. Exactly. You're going to make sure they have the best. But you got to make sure you take care of yourself, too. You know? Um, see, I'm one of eight kids, and I had eight kids. And growing up with my three sisters and my mom, I picked up on a lot of stuff. A lot, a lot of stuff. And... It was just emotions everywhere. My older brother probably didn't pick up on much as well because he was in his home all the time. But I seen the things that my mom had to go through. You know? The men that came in her life, the men that left out of her life. Um, she still remained strong, independent. independent. You know, she didn't go saying, I'm independent. I pay my bills. I do this, blase, blase. You know what? She did it with pride. My mom wanted a lot of kids. She wanted, you know, a big family. My mom had eight kids a year behind each other. The oldest one is 25, the youngest is 16. That's 16. So she knew what she was getting herself into. She wasn't expecting to have a man, well she was expecting to have a man there for the rest of her life, but she wasn't expecting him, you know, to be there, you know? My mom always taught me, don't always, you know, set yourself up to win. Because when you fail, you lose, you feel like you're gonna lose everything, which is totally, you know, I, I believe that. And, I love my mom to death. Growing up with her, you know, not having, you know, quote unquote, the best of, you know, not having the best of the best. You know, we work with what we had. And she taught us from a young child growing up, you know, sometimes you have to struggle before things will get better, sweetheart. It will get rough, but trust me, it's gonna, it's gonna be worth it. You know, um, there were days she would come home from work and I would massage her. My mom loved you know, massages, um, she loved clean, you know, she loved cleaning, and when she couldn't do it, I took up the slack. When she couldn't cook, I took up the slack. And I noticed that my mom, I'm not saying she favoritized me, but she loved that about me, like, she, was, she always taught me and my brother, cater to your woman. If you have nothing else better to give a woman, if you can't give a woman, <laughs> if you can't give a woman good, mm, um, money, if you can't give her the world, Give her respect. Give her the the joy of coming home to a clean home, a hot meal, you know, and the ambience of being loved. And I've always kept that with me growing up. You know, treat a woman with respect. Treat everybody. Matter of fact, treat everybody with respect. 
But when you have that that special woman that you want to be with for the rest of your life, make sure you cater to them every need. So when you got, if there was a situation where you break up, you know, they will know it was their loss. Oh, uh, you know. Um, and it kind of irks me when I see women out there, you know, talking about some. I want a man to pay my bills. You know, I'm looking for a man to take care of me. Sweetie, by you saying that, you kind of pushing the guys away. I don't know any guy. No, I do know guys that do want to work for their women. I, I'm kind of one of them, but I want it to be a partnership. I want all, both of us to bring something to the table. You know, what if something was to happen to me? I would want her to have a job so she could have some money, you know, you know, take care of the kids or if we do have kids or whatever, and vice versa. Um, traditionally, the man is the breadwinner and it puts a lot of pressure on the man. And oh, it, it's, it's a whole lot of stuff I could go into. But it kind of pushes women, I'm sorry, it kind of pushes men away when women be like, I'm looking at to pay my bills, do my hair, you know, buy my clothes, you know, pay my car note. No, 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 boo. No, Babuski. I'm not no man that's trying to work for you. If anything, I'm trying to work to please God and make sure that we, I, I'm not gonna lie, I'm gonna make sure we have an understanding where I'm coming from. I'm gonna love you. I'm gonna cater to you as much as I can. And I was, I'm not gonna say I will spoil you, but I will make sure I will give you the things that you will need. And if I do have something left over, hey, I'll splurge to get you them little shoes that you want. I'll get you that Louis purse. You know, if I got it, I will get it for you. But some of them have to understand that not every man out here is a baller. They have some really, really good men out here. But they keep pushing them to the side, looking for the people with the moolah. They look for people with the um with the money and stuff like that for the cars. I think the people with the money and the cars are nothing but facades. Because once they fade away, what they going to have? What you used to the man doing if he have money? Taking you shopping, taking you doing this, you know, telling you hip, what's your friends? If the man don't like got no money, then what the hell are you going to... I'm sorry, excuse me. I don't know what you're going to do now. Be bored, be broke. But if you had a man that take care of you, the best company in the world. You could talk about you could talk about stuff for hours. For hours. Like, totally. And it wouldn't matter because you would be, in the end, the richest woman in the world. Because you finally have someone that respects you and, you know, treats you for you. They don't look at you as being... um the money maker or the, the one who doesn't make money. I hope I'm making sense, but it makes sense in my head, but I know catering to a woman is a number one thing a man should do, regardless if you have money or not. Respect her. Treat her right. Like you said, tell nice things. When my sisters and my mom was going through the womanly thing when they friend came to town, you know, a nice compliment here and there. Simple gestures as could I run your bath water? You know, do you need me to go to the store, get your products, stuff like that. That made them feel even much more protected and secure. Like, oh my god, like you would do that for me? Wow. I know my brother's gonna be a good man to somebody. I know my son will be a good man to somebody one day. You know, I spoiled my women. If they, was, if they were sick, they didn't even have the same thing. I was out there in the cold running, you know, going to get them some get them some medicine out there. My mom, there were times where I had to go into my mom's job sometimes and work for her. She used to work at this crappy hotel or whatever, this crappy motel. And I used to um, go there and work some of her shifts when she wasn't able to do it. So I know firsthand what it takes to, you know, make things work for the true independent women. True independent women do kind of need help. They need security, foundation, stability from a man. Um, but, I mean, that's pretty much what I have to say. I ain't got nothing. Well, I do got more to say, but, you know, that's all I got to say. That's it. I'm out. Got any more questions? Hit me up. But thank you so much, Spark Wisdom, for posting this video up. Black Chicago. Mm. Gotta get back to you on that, boo. Love y'all. Gotta go.